Welcome to Chief PTU. Today we'll be looking at Economics Paper 11, May, June 2022. All right, let's start. Okay, so for the first question, it says, the diagram shows the production possibility curve for an economy that's producing at point P. So at point P, we are producing 110 uh, of good Y and 100 of uh, good X. So which quantity of X is given now to produce the quantity of Y shown? Now, assuming that we completely produce good X, which will be 150, so uh, then that means that we will be producing zero good Y. But now, in order to produce 110 uh, good Y, uh, we have to forego uh, the amount of uh, the particular amount of good X in order to produce that particular amount of good Y. So that would be 150, which is the maximum that we can produce for good X, and then minus 100, so we get 50. So the quantity of X has given up is 50, so answer is B. Question two, the Indian government operates a pension scheme. And which statement about this scheme would be classed as normative? Okay, so now we need to look at which one would be a normative statement. So A, it says to be eligible, individuals must be above the age of 60 and live below the poverty line. This can be tested and it could be factual, so answer is not this one. B, it says in January 2020, eligible individuals aged over 70 receive 500 rupees per month, uh, which could be tested, it could be factual. And in C, it says... In 2018, the Supreme Court said the government must review pension payments because they are unrealistic. So the Supreme Court wants the government to review pension payments. This one is a obvious statement because it says the government must review. It's based on one's opinion, the Supreme Court's opinion. And D it says in January 2020, the Indian government announced that it might increase the payment to uh, 1,000 rupees per month. Uh, this would be classified as a policy statement because this could be tested, it could be factual. If I say C. Question 3, economic students have to fill in the gaps in the following passage. The three basic questions arising from the economic problem of scarcity are what to produce, uh, sorry, are empty box or empty line or yeah, uh, blank to produce, blank to produce, and blank to produce. And which combination is correct? So that will be, uh, this would be, first of all, it's what to produce and how to produce and for whom to produce. So this one will be C. Yep. <laughs> Question 4, what is not a function of money? A, it is a medium of exchange. This is a function. B, it is a store of value. It's a function. And C, it is a unit of account, which is a function. And D, it says it is a measure of satisfaction, which is not correct. So answer is D. Question 5, the producer of a good with a price elastic demand observes that a rise in its price is accompanied by a rise in total revenue. And what might explain this? So... A rise in its price is accompanied by a rise in total revenue. A, it says the good is an inferior good, which is not correct. If the good is an inferior good, the uh, it would be when, let's say, there's an increase in income, there'll be a decrease in demand for the inferior good. And if, let's say there's a decrease in income, then there'll be an increase in demand for the inferior good. But here it says PED, the opposite of rise in price and the rise in total revenue. So this is not the answer. And B, it says the rise in price was due to an increase in demand for the good. Um, it is PED, so this could be tested, so let's test it out. And this one will be your demand curve in the supply curve. The rise in price was due to an increase in demand, so let's say the demand curve shifts to Ryan. And then, yes, this will result in a rise in total revenue, so yes, this is the answer. C says the supply of the good was inadequate to meet the demand, which is not correct. This means that it is PED, uh, it is supply inelastic. And, uh, sorry, this means that the supply of the good was inadequate, this means that there would be uh, there will be a. This means that if let's say if let's say a supply of goods is inadequate to meet the demand, this means that the price is actually below the market price. But there's a rise in the price, so it's not the answer. And D it says the supply of the goods was price inelastic, which is not correct. So answer is B. Question six: What will increase the producer surplus of farmers that grow carrots? So what will increase the producer surplus? So it will look something like this. This one will be your. Demand curve, supply curve. So a decrease in the demand for carrot will look something like this. So original price was this, and the original price will, uh, this is a, the the price after the decrease in demand. So if let's say there's a decrease in demand, this will decrease the producer surplus. So nope. B it says a decrease in the price of carrot seeds. A decrease in the price of carrot seeds. This one means that if let's say there's a decrease in the price of carrot seeds, the supply curve will then shift to a right. It will look something like this. So, yes, this would increase the producer surplus because a decrease in the price of carrot seed means that there is a, increase in, a decrease in cost of production. So, 
it will increase the producer uh, surplus because the entire area has now become larger. So this would be the correct answer. But let's look at the others. C it says a decrease in the price of cabbage, which, which is not related. D it says a decrease in the subsidy on carrots, which will result in the supply curve to shift to the left. If the supply curve shifts to the left, then you can see that there is an increase in price, but then the area of the producer surplus has become smaller. So this is not the answer. So answer is me. Question 7, a popular band is due to perform at a music concert in a venue that has a 5,000 seat capacity. Recent appearances and the release of a new album has made the band even more popular. D1 and S represent the original demand and supply curves for concert tickets and D2 the new demand curve. And which diagram best represents the likely outcome of the market for concert tickets? So that means that the supply curve must be inelastic because it already says that there is a 5,000 seat capacity for the particular concert, uh, for the particular uh, venue. So that means that there's a fixed amount. There's there's no way that the amount can be increased. It's not like producing products, but then we only have 5,000 seats as a supply. So here you can see that the ones that do not have an inelastic supply curve would be B and D. So this one will definitely be wrong. So we have A and C. And then it says that uh, uh, recent appearances and release of the album has made the menu more popular. Uh, so the most likely outcome for this one would be it has to be, uh, you can see that for A, the supply curve shifts to the left. So this is not the answer because now the release of new album has made the band even more popular, meaning that there will be an increase in demand for people going to the concert. So when there's a decrease in demand, this means that it is the opposite thing, so it's not correct. So the one with an increase in demand will be C, so answer is C. Question 8, why does an individual demand curve generally slope downwards to the right? So A, it says the additional satisfaction an individual gets from consuming most goods decreases as consumption increases, which is correct. And B, it says the additional satisfaction an individual gets from consumption decreases as income rises, which is not correct. Because the demand curve is uh, is bounded by the x and y axis, which is the price and the, uh, it's a quantity and the price, it's not the income. And C, the individual has finite income, which is used to attempt to satisfy many wants, which is not correct. And D, it says for most goods, the price chart of producers fall as the quantity purchase increases. Uh, nope. If the quantity purchase increases, that means the demand curve shifts to a right and there'll be an increase in price. So it's not correct. So one says A. Question 9, where is the price elasticity of supply? This would be the percentage change in quantity supply over the percentage change in price. So A, it says the change in quantity supply when the price changes, which is not correct. B, it says the change in the quantity supply when demand changes, which is not correct. And C, it says the comparison of the proportionate change in supply to the proportionate change in demand, which is not correct. D, it says the comparison of the proportionate change in supply to the proportionate change in price. So I say it's D. Uh, a is not correct because it says the change in the quantity supply when the price changes. We are looking at the uh, change in quantity supply divided by the percentage change in price. So that's why it's not correct because uh, the sentence structure is not correct. B, it says a change in the quantity supply when demand changes, which is not correct because we are not looking at it when the demand changes, but when the price changes. C is not correct because it says proportionate change in demand. So that's why the answer is D. Question 10, what is necessary for consumer surplus to be zero? So in order for consumer surplus to be zero, it has to be something like this. So this is your supply curve and this is your demand curve. So in order for consumer surplus to be completely zero, your demand curve will have to be perfectly elastic. So answer is A horizontal line here, which is elastic. And question 11, when will the price mechanism not function as a system for, allo for allocating goods? A, it says when the government bans advertising, it will still function as a system for allocating goods even though the government bans advertising. And B, when the government maintains an effective maximum price, this means there's government intervention, so it will not function. C, when there's a limited supply of goods, it will be used for allocating goods, which will function. And D, when there's a powerful company, it will set the market price, so it will still be under market mechanism, uh, market forces and price mechanism, so answer is B. Because for only for B, there's government intervention. And it's uh, question 12. The price of a product is above the market equilibrium price. And which combination of changes is certain to result as the market adjusts towards equilibrium? So price of product is above market equilibrium price, which looks something like this. Uh, so price of product, let's say this is the minimum price. And now, in order, if let's say for the price to shift to the equilibrium price, this one will be your D and this one will be your S, then your supply will decrease and then your quantity demanded will increase. So A, B is wrong. So it should be rise in the quantity demanded and then a drop in the quantity supply. So it will rise at the 4, so 12 is C. 
Question 13, what can be concluded about a good with a positive cross price elasticity of demand? A good with positive cross price elasticity of demand means that uh, both of these goods, they are substitutes. So A, it says its price will be sensitive to changes in prices of closed substitutes, uh, which is not correct. Because we're not comparing prices to prices, we're comparing demand and prices. And then B, it says its price will be sensitive to changes in quantity demanded of closed substitutes, uh, which is... Uh, which is actually not correct because it is not it is not that the price is sensitive to changes in quantity demanded of closed substitutes it's that the quantity demanded is sensitive to changes in prices of closed substitutes it's the other way around because for C uh, for XED it will be percentage change of let's say QDX divided by the P uh, price of what so it's the price that is affect uh, it's the quantity demanded that is affected by price but not the price that is affected by the quantity demanded it's the other way around it's this affected by this, not this affected by this. So B is not correct. So C it says the quantity demanded for the put will be sensitive to changing the price of the post substitute, which is correct. D it says quantity demanded for the put will be sensitive to changing the quantity demanded of post substitute, which is not correct. So I say C. Uh, in the new syllabus, it's actually not recommended to use the word sensitive anymore. It's better to use the word responsive. In fact, it's for essays, it's better to use the word responsive uh, because this one is for the previous syllabus. Uh, and so for the new syllabus, it's better to use the word responsive if you're writing an essay. Question 14, which row shows the effect of the maximum and minimum prices described in the headings of the table? So maximum price above equilibrium price, there'll be no effect because for consumers, uh, for producers, they are, um, for them, they want to maximize their profits. So maximum price above equilibrium price means that they would rather just sell at the market price in order to have uh, in order to meet to actually uh would actually to uh sell like let's say I want to sell like five hundred uh amount uh, amount of five hundred for this product and then, then the funding demand will be also be five hundred. So the market will clear at that particular price. So if let's say the maximum price is above the equilibrium price means that it is ineffective. So there's no effect. So A B is wrong. And then maximum price below equilibrium price is um, effective, um, but this means that there's an excess demand. So yep, excess demand. So D is not correct. And then minimum price above equilibrium price will be excess supply. So answer is C. Question fifteen: The government decides to introduce tolls to drive on all major roads. And what is most likely to happen to the number of journeys made on major roads and on minor roads? Uh, journeys on uh, major routes would actually uh, reduce because of toll charges. Uh, because if you were to charge for something, then that means that there will be a decrease in demand. There will be a decrease in demand regardless. But then, uh, because major routes are mostly inelastic uh, in P uh, in its PED, so even though there is a decrease in major routes, there's not going to be a very significant change. However, there would definitely be an increase in journeys on minor roads. So, um, so let's say I don't want to drive on the highway, I want to drive on a federal road. Most people will actually end up choosing to drive on the uh, federal road instead, but not everyone will do that. People will still drive on the highway. People will still probably drive on the highway, but the, 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 the people who will be driving on the highway will be lower. So yes, journeys on major roads will reduce and journeys on minor roads will increase. So answer is B. Question 16, the table shows data from a bus company that was privatized in 2013. And what is the most likely conclusion that can be made from the data? So the company was privatized in 2013. And so you can see that the passenger journey's percentage change from previous year in 2012 is positive 5%. In 2013, it's positive 2%. In 2014, it's negative 2 And in 2015, it's negative 1 So what is the most likely conclusion? ASS average prices were higher in 2012 than in uh, 2015, which is not correct. B, it says average prices were higher in 2015 than 2014, which is uh, correct because you can see that for 2014, the revenue was 430,000, but the passenger journeys from the previous year was actually negative 2%. But then in 2015, the revenue increased, but only with a negative 1% of uh, decrease in the percentage change in the passenger journeys. So that means that the prices in 2015 will be relatively higher than in 2014. Because even though there's an increase in revenue, uh, because even though there is an increase in revenue, the passenger journey's uh, percentage change is actually low. 
And so this means that uh, the passengers will have to pay more in 2015. So B is correct. And C is that the number of passenger journeys remain the same since privatization, which is not correct. There's definitely a drop. And then D is that profits have increased since privatization, which is not correct given that you can see the revenue is actually 495 uh, during the year that was privatized, but then afterwards the revenue dropped, so B is not correct because of that. And so the answer is B. So, okay, so then for question 17, the diagram shows the market for electricity in the country that has a fixed supply of electricity and introduces a maximum price to make it affordable for poor households. And what will be the effect of this? A, it says it will encourage producers to build more power stations in the future, which is not correct. B, it says it will encourage the development of renewable sources of electricity, which is not correct. And C, it will increase producer surplus, which is not correct. And D, it will increase the probability of power cuts. Now, the market price is uh, this point, as you can see, but the maximum price results in shortage. So producers would not want to build more power stations because they simply don't have the profits to do so. And then it will also not encourage the development of renewable sources of electricity because of this. And then C, it will definitely decrease producer surplus because you're dropping from the market price to the maximum price, so there's a decrease in the area. And then because of this, there's a decrease in supply, so there will be an increase in power cuts because of the shortage. So answer is D. And question 18, what is an example of a transfer payment? So a transfer payment would be a payment that is made without production taking place. So A says government spending on hospitals, which is not correct. Government spending on motorways, which is also not correct. C says minimum wage, but it's also not correct. So it has to be welfare benefits. Government spending on the hospitals and government spending on motorways, these will result in production. Let's say, for example, hospitals. Uh, you earn money from, from building hospitals. You also earn money from motorways by charging toll rates. And then for minimum wage, there's production that takes place because this is given to employees. But welfare benefits, you're giving it uh, like that to people. And so uh, welfare benefits are considered transfer payments. Question 19, Turkey can produce a good but also import some of the wood from Egypt. The Turkish, the Turkish currency depreciates against the Egyptian currency. And how is this most likely to affect production of this good in Egypt and Turkey? So now the Turkish currency depreciates, uh, depreciates against the Egyptian currency. This means that the, uh, because of this decrease, this means that for this particular good, um, this means that now if you were to buy from Egypt, it would be relatively more expensive. So because of the fact that it is actually more expensive, this means that the demand for imports from Egypt will actually decrease. So the production will also decrease. So it has to be A or B. And then production in Turkey would actually uh, increase because because of the fact that the, there's a depreciation in the uh, against the Egyptian currency, now we're actually allowing for more employment in Turkey itself. So people will then, so for the AD curve, okay, sorry, this is an AS and AD curve. So then now in uh, Turkey, there will be an increase in AD to the right because of the depreciation. And so the production in Turkey will then increase. So I'll say it's B. Okay, for question 20, the table shows the country's total output and its average price in each of three years. And what can be concluded about output? So here it says nominal output and real output. So how do we calculate nominal output and real output? So if let's say we were to take the output and then we the, uh, we multiply with the price here, this would be our nominal output. Because the prices here are not adjusted for inflation. So now we're going to uh, multiply them. So then we'll get our nominal output. This one will be, uh, if, we, if we were to multiply this one, we'll get 200 um, million in our nominal output. This one will be... 288 and this one will be uh this one will be this one will be 338 this one will be your nominal output and now let's calculate real output real output after adjusting for inflation that means the price will always remain at 20 so this one will be 200 this one will be 240 then this one will be 260 so this one will be a real output and this one will be a nominal output or we can just say nominal gp and real gdp so A, it says nominal output and real output increase at the same rate. If you look at the numbers, they are not at the same rate. It's not correct. B, it says nominal output rose at a faster rate than real output. So you can see that this one is basically plus 88 and plus 50. Uh, 50. This one is plus 40 and plus 20. So yes, it rose at a faster rate. 
CSS nominal output rose at an increasing rate, which is not correct because it increased by uh, 88 and then it increased by 50. So it's not an increasing rate, but rather uh, it increased and then it decreased. The rate uh, rose at an increasing rate and a decreasing rate. And DSS real output rose at a constant rate, which is not correct because it's plus 40 then plus 20. So answer is B. Question 21, the diagram shows a change in the supply curve of imports S to S1 to curve S to S2 after the introduction by the government of a trade protection measure and what is the full protectionism? So S to S1 is the original curve and then S to S2 is the uh, is the curve after the introduction by the government of a trade protection measure. You can see that the quantity is fixed. This means that there's a quota. So answer is C. Question 22, the aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram shows an economy in equilibrium at X. In the economy, a severe shortage of raw materials causes a large rise in your price. The effect of this change is shown by a movement to which point? A severe shortage of raw materials. So this means that the aggregate supply will then shift to the left. So the answer is B. Because there's no change in aggregate demand. Question 23, why might a country's government impose a tax on fuel exports? A it says to encourage domestic refineries to increase production, which is not correct because if you impose a tax, this means that the for, uh, good will be more expensive and so there will be a decrease in demand overseas. So you will not encourage domestic refineries to increase production. B it says to improve the country's trade balance, which is not correct because balance of trade is the difference between the volume of exports and the volume of imports, so it's not B. And then C to reduce fuel prices for domestic consumers, which is, which is correct. And D it says to reduce the government's budget surplus, which is not correct. Because uh, because if you impose a tax on fuel exports, this would uh, this is not really the government's reason to uh, impose a tax on fuel exports to begin with. Uh, the budget surplus is basically when your revenue is more than your expenditure. Uh, so for C, the reason why C is correct is because if you were to reduce fuel prices for domestic consumers, uh, let's say for uh, your exports, they, there's a decrease in demand, the price will decrease. So then for domestic consumers, you can actually get relatively cheaper fuel. So um, so your price of export, uh, your yeah, so for your price of exports, it will be lower than your price of imports. And then um, for domestic consumers, they'll be able to afford the fuel. So answer is C. And then 24, what leads to a fall in the country's terms of trade? A, it says a fall in the price of exports relative to the price of imports, uh, which is correct. And B, it says a fall in the price of imports relative to the price of exports. This will increase the terms of trade. C, it says a fall in the quantity of exports relative to the quantity of imports, which is not correct. And D, it says a fall in the quantity of imports, which is not correct as well. This one is under balance of trade, so answer is A. For question 25, it says the diagram has three lines that show the values of an economy's exports, import, and trade balance between 2011 and 2019. So let's look at 2011. The two lines that are in the, that represents the surplus would be line three and line one. Uh, the line that represents the deficit is line two. In 2019, there are no lines that represent uh deficit. All of them are surplus. So if let's say there is a deficit, uh this means that in 2011, the reason why there's a deficit for let's say trade balance, for example, this means that your Imports are more than your exports. Okay, so assuming that this is your exports and this is your, uh, sorry, this one is the the one on top is your imports and then the one on the bottom is exports. This means that there will be a deficit. And then in year two thousand nineteen, because all of these numbers are positive, all of them are surplus. There's a, all these numbers are positive. So, um. So, but just now I mentioned that for the second line, this is exports, right? So if let's say this one is your exports. And then the dotted line is the imports. This would create a trade a straight balance surplus, which would be at line two. So the ex the the value the volume of exports minus your volume of imports, you will get your trade balance. So that'll be line two. But for line one, your imports are more than your exports. So if you were to take your exports, which is a positive number, but it's lower than imports, minus your imports, you'll get a negative number. So that's why your trade balance would be at line 2. Or I should say that the trade balance would be a negative as at a deficit. So this one, line 1, would be your exports. Line 2 would be your trade balance. 
and line three of your imports. You could try and you can test it out yourself by actually doing trial and error. Like you can maybe shift the the, the, the exports and imports around and see whether or not they make sense. Uh, for this one, I explained that if let's say for 2011, in order to get a deficit, you have to be imports on top and exports on the bottom. And then for 2019, because all of them are at a surplus, this means that uh, it has to be another way around. So like exports will be on the top, it has the most uh, uh, volume. And then imports will be the one with the lowest volume in order to get the uh, trade surplus in the middle. Let's see which one matches the one with 2011. So then you get the answer for this one. So this one will be B. Number 26, what would be the best policy to increase the value of a currency? It says import, impose tariffs on imported goods with price elastic demand. This will not increase the value, it will decrease. B it says increase interest rates, which is correct. C it says reduce income tax, which is not correct. And D it says sell the currency on the foreign exchange market, which is also not correct. If you were to sell the currency on the foreign exchange market, then people will then purchase the currency and then they will. And then if you were to sell the currency as well, this would actually increase the supply. When you increase the supply, the the value of your currency would actually decrease. So it has to be B. And then 27, the central bank of an economy decides to raise interest rate in order to attract capital inflows and improve the financial account of balance of payments. And when is the central bank's decision this likely to be effective? A, it says when the currency of the economy is expected to lose its value, which is correct. Because even though you were to increase re interest rates, but if, let's say the currency is expected to lose its value, people would still not actually um, exchange the money for that particular currency. And B, it says when the economy is politically and economically stable, this will be effective, so it's not correct. C, when the interest rate of the economy is higher than that of other countries, which is basically going to be effective, so it's not correct as well. D, when the reserves hold, held by the central bank are high and rising, which is going to be effective as well, so it's not correct. So answer is A. 28, what could be described as an expansionary fiscal policy? Uh, expansionary fiscal policy is basically when there's an increase in expenditure and a decrease in tax rates. So A, it says a decrease in the budget deficit. This one is a contractionary fiscal policy, so it's not correct. So B, it says a decrease in the budget surplus, which is correct. Because... Because a decrease in budget deficit is basically to reduce your expenditure and increase your your revenue. So this one is contractionary. Expansionary is basically to increase uh to increase expenditure. And so there's a decrease in the budget surplus because your revenue will now be less than your expenditure. And then C it says a decrease in the exchange rate and D it says a decrease in the money supply, both of which are under uh, monetary policy. But it says B. Twenty nine, why will contractionary monetary policy reduce inflation? Uh, a, it says banks will lend more, which is not correct. People will end up saving money in banks. B, it says consumers will have higher disposable income, which is not correct. C, it says consumers will pay more taxes under fiscal policy, so D should be the answer. Consumers will save more. And thirdly, the government of the country is worried about a large deficit on the current account of its balance of payments and the increasing rate of inflation. The country has a fixed exchange rate for its currency. And which policy matter is most likely to help the government to reduce the current account deficit and lower the rate of inflation? So reduce the current account deficit and lower the rate of inflation. So A, if you were to devalue the currency, then you'll result in increased real inflation. So 30 is not the answer. A is not the answer. If you increase government spending, it's also going to increase real inflation. C, if you were to decrease the direct tax, you'll also increase inflation. So it has to be D, which is increasing the interest rate. All right. So that's the end of this paper. I hope you find this video helpful. Do share this video out to other people who may need this video. And I hope to see you again in the next video, which would be about another uh, past year paper discussion. Uh, and then for that next video, that will probably be the last video for now. Uh, and so there will probably be no upcoming videos until probably a few weeks later. Uh, because I'm also going to be doing personal revision for uh, economics, uh, paper one. Till then, this is you.